Kevin Steinberg is with us now. He is the COO of the World Economic Forum. Kevin has the very latest and exclusive report on the rankings of 57 of the world's leading financial systems and capital. He's with me now in the newsroom. Kevin, thanks so much for coming in to talk about this. One surprising thing here is that the U.S. and the U.K. still come out on top of this list for financial stability. Why is that? What, what metrics are you using? Well, good morning, Georgia. It's a pleasure to be here. And you're right that the U.S. and the U.K. have topped our ratings this year. And for some, that would come as a bit of a surprise. The reason for it is the breadth and depth of the capital markets across those two countries are still very effective. There's still great IPO activity, still great M&A activity. And so the strength they bring in terms of financial intermediation really brings them to the top. It is a surprise, especially with what we're seeing I mean many people calling what the Fed did yesterday a 600 billion dollar stimulus plan we're expecting the Bank of England to consider more QE so I mean there it's being supported by government we have well, to say it is and there's a bit of a mixed story and part of what we want to highlight is the fact that if you look at the detail this leadership really is in jeopardy if you look at financial stability in, in particular both the US and the UK don't have very good scores there's several elements of financial stability we look at but the two where there are real concerns are first around currency stability. If you look at the value of the dollar and the pound, what might happen oh, over rooting. time? They are indeed, and whether that trend will continue, we'll see. And secondly, another sign of weakness is really around bank stability, that is the banking system, whether the banks can remain as stable as they are now and not continue some of the weaknesses we've seen over prior years. So you just mentioned that both of those spots, the U.S. and the U.K.'s top spots, are in jeopardy. It's not a surprise when I read through your rankings. Hong Kong and Singapore are advancing, right? They're sort of moving up in the rankings and closing the gap. They are indeed. So those two Asian economies are really doing very well, and they're doing very well across the board. So if I take Hong Kong as an example, they not only have good scores across the overall average, but they have very strong scores across all elements of our index. That is over the business environment, the institutional environment, as well as intermediation and access to capital. So what we would say is the U.S. and the U.K. may be doing well, but if they're looking in the rearview mirror, we see those two economies coming up quickly. Now, you also looked at emerging markets, some Mexico. Mexico, Brazil, Chile, how are they positioned? Well, they are considerably lower in the index. And what's very interesting from our perspective is if you look at GDP growth and where we expect global growth to come over the coming years, the majority of it is expected to come from emerging markets. However, if you look at the financial markets in many of these places, it's unclear if they have the depth and sophistication to provide the financing that will be needed to drive that to growth. To help them growth. So there's real questions that emerge around currency. There's real questions that emerge around hot flows of money. And there's real questions about how those economies will really grow the way we hope. And of course, if those are going to be the engines of global growth over the coming years, having the financial support for that growth is critically important, not just for those economies, but for the whole world. Now, we haven't even talked about Europe, which I guess is, says more than it should about where it falls in world rankings. Do European countries keep sort of falling lower and lower on the list? Well, a number of Euro European countries have basically stayed flat. If we look at our top 10, there's some presence there. But I think your point is very well taken. A lot of the conversation that we're having, a lot of the concerns we have are around the U.S. and the U.K. keeping their leadership. A lot of the movement upwards is happening, happening in the emerging economies. And so on some level, Europe is stagnating in the ratings. It's keeping doing well. But really, if you look at where growth will come from, we're not counting on Europe to really buoy the global economy at this point. Kevin, thanks so much for coming in. Kevin Steinberg from the World Economic Forum. He is the COO.